Cool. So my name is Heriberto Reynoso. Um, I won't go into depth on how lasers work, and but I will speak on how I built uh, a six by four foot uh, CNC laser machine. Uh, I finished building the machine around late June. Uh, um, Why did I build a, C a large uh, CNC machine, which cost about six thousand um, dollars? Because uh, machines out in the market currently cost anywhere from four to fifty thousand dollars of, of the like, and I'm currently upgrading it so I can in so I can add a z-axis, a two-foot z-axis, that will allow me to do 3D la uh, laser sintering, uh, which is like 3D printing, but high resolution. Um, and I can do titanium, I can do steel um, by, by just using the powder um, in its ground up form. Uh, so these, these robots, I, I started building robots at the age of 14. Um, I graduated from the University of Texas at Bronzeville with a bachelor's in computer science. Um, I chose computer science because I figured the future of robotics was artificial intelligence. It wasn't a reinventing the wheel or reinventing a circuit board which you can just reverse engineer and, or have China develop it for one tenth of the price. Um, which is currently what's going on with, with Arduinos. You could buy them for $10 and, and Arduino in Italy or selling them for 50, 40 bucks. Um, so I st I'd started developing robots entirely by hand. Uh, Roger, I don't know where you're at. Out of the first, it, it, it was out of the kitchen table. And then my mom got pissed off um, because I would use super glue, I would use the drill, and, and I wasn't too nice on the wood. So then I said, could I take over the garage? And I didn't inclu include all, all those pictures because I only have 10 minutes, but I'll just speak about it. Um, and I, my parents said no, because that's for the cars, right? And a lot more of the weed ear and all the stuff that we don't know where else to put inside the house. And I said, all right. I went ahead and took a, the Google Scholarship um, I got in my sophomore year. And I went ahead and bought an industrial 37 foot long building to put in the backyard. And they said, estas loco. Like, you cannot put an industrial looking building in a residential area. <laughs> and so I went ahead and sold that on Craigslist. And they gave in. They gave me the garage. And uh, soon after, I began building robots for national competitions. Uh, these robots, you can, you can see very well, uh, where's the laser? The, oh, it does? You can see the Legos there. So at an early age, I began with, with Legos, and those were my building blocks from, from the get-go. And I worked my way up. I had no tools, so I would use a blade. And you, the robots you see up front, I would use a blade to stroke the plexiglass and crack it once I was about a quarter inch, a quarter way through the quarter inch thick uh, Lex uh, Lexan or place glass. Um, and then little by little, I got sponsors. For, for, for $5,000, I got a, a, a sponsor. And I built three of these robots. And I made it all the way up to second place uh, nationals. And that's a robotic arm. Please be very careful. <laughs> so, so this is all entirely built by hand. Um, and it, it made it all the way up to nationals. It lost, though. It's the year after that, I, I, I was able to win second place nationals. Um, I'll just move on. But my goal for this laser machine was to be able to CAD up or through computer-aided design in SOLIDWORKS, develop a robot entirely from, uh, from scratch on the computer, uh, which I'll show you in a bit, and, and then just send it out to the, to the laser and have, that, have the laser cut it in three minutes, as opposed to have me spend an entire night developing, or weeks, it depends. So um, that was my goal, which leads me to this. Um, so early this summer, I, be, I ordered everything. Um, I went ahead and ordered parts, uh, linear actuators, stepper motors, uh, drives, 30,000-volt uh, power supply units, 1,500-kilowatt uh, cooler so I can cool the laser. The laser itself is about a meter, uh, 1.5 meters um, in length and six, in six inches in diameter. Um, it gets so hot, if it, if it reaches high temperatures, um, a 10,000 hour uh, lifespan of, of, for that laser dies pretty quickly. So you need a pretty um, uh, large cooler to cool down the uh, laser itself. So th I went to Home Depot and I said, well, I don't have the welding equipment yet. I do now. Um, and I, I just went ahead and, and I needed a strong base so that the laser doesn't warp, doesn't warp or twist um, as the laser head is moving in, in rapid traverse speeds for 350 millimeters a second, which is quite fast. Um, so it, that was the garage. And it was a two-car garage. And no cars fit in there because of this machine now. Um, but my, my goal later down the road is to 
use this machine for the lasering uh, processes, but then also use a router, um, a, a large machine. It's about 10 by 6 feet um, and, 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 and pretty, pretty large, about, about 2 tons, and then have a, a router on one head, and then have the, the fiber laser, which is 500 watt laser, which can cut through half inch steel or quarter inch aluminum, and then reach those kind of projects that are too hard to reach. Uh, you can essentially create cars or chassis and then just you know, send it to the laser. And instead of using a water jet, you use a laser, much cheaper um, and cleaner. You don't need to use that abrasive material that water jet uh, machines use. Um, and so what I did, I, I went all ghetto on this. I, I had a buddy fly from, from California. Um, I met when I was doing an inter internship at NASA. Uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and we hit it off great, and, and he, he figured out, you know, I, got a, I have a girlfriend that actually works for, uh, for the government uh, on these very high-power lasers, and uh, of, of which she proved to be no help because this was entirely different. Um, and so I went ahead and used a, a cheapy $3 laser from Walmart. I went ahead and mounted this Lexan, which I bent on a 90 degree angle and mounted off the, the, the sidewall. And I had to make sure that it was exactly at the right height. And so the right height from, from where that 1 8 inch hole is at matches the re first reflector on the outer end, which I'll show you in a bit, which is that one. And so the laser shoots, and it has to hit straight dead on center. There's paper on the, on the, on the other end, though. And then I use the silicon reflectors that uh, reflect that laser. Right now, it's safe. It's a you know, milliwatt range. We don't want to use a high power laser, which is invisible. Um, although this one is visible. Uh, I'll show you in a bit. I'll show you a video of it in action. And then, so that's, that's the laser. This is the power supply unit. Um, first reflector, as you saw in a bit. We have 30,000 volts running uh, through that entire tube. It is so high voltage, it's about 25 to 30 milliamps. It's low milliamps, so you're not going to die from it if you get shocked from it. Um, but it will scare you. And so if you're about 6 to 8 inches if you're about six to eight inches off the tube, you, stu you feel that energy, and your hair start you know, picking up. So it's quite scary, and I, I make sure I stay away from that. And so I, I, I went ahead and uh, to, to make sure that the laser itself, before I had that large laser tube, I had a small, the, the small $3 laser pointer, right? Uh, the only way to line this thing up was to either use like a $1,000 laser or alignment tools and whatnot. I just went to Walmart and bought the $3 laser and did it myself in, in less than three hours, which is unheard of. Um, the only way I did it is, because, is using the, I don't know if you guys can see that little plate back there. And as long as I can match the center of that, um, which was uh, on a, it was machine on a lathe. And because it was machine on a lathe, the way uh, I, I, I can very, very accurately determine the center of the end of that laser, I matched it up with a hole, eyeballed it. And then I went ahead and, and, and shot a few, and, and I'll show you in a bit, I'll show you a video of, of uh, test uh, shots, I guess you would say. So that's just a wooden block, about uh, an inch and a half thick. And it was getting close to actually melting the entire depth of that. And it shoots about a five millimeter thick uh, uh, diameter uh, laser beam. And I want to show you. What do you guys have on your hands right now? So we're running about, this was at 35% cost, 35% of the total capacity of the 150 watt laser. Um, and we're doing about 50 millimeters per second. So it takes about a, a minute and 30 seconds to finish the entire um, temperature at 5%. Uh, and I'll show you how I did that. I mean, it's quite easy. I just went in to the Facebook page and I pulled the logo and I recreated it on the software uh, using Flash actually. Um, very flash. And I went in and dropped it into laser pad with the the actual software for both sides of the decode and then that's essentially what talks to the laser machine and uh, that's just it. It's on YouTube, I just uploaded it today. Yes. 
I know, it's weird. Uh, just look up my name, Heriberto Reynoso. Uh... Yeah, that's not So just look up my name. I'll run through the slides now. I don't have much time. Um, so that's pretty much the entire laser bed. It's about eight foot and six six feet um, wide. There is no more room for cars. There's no more room for extra machines. In fact, the welding equipment I actually had to throw it underneath the table. Um, There we go. So that's the five miller, millimeter and so what I use cap down tape because any other tape would just melt right through and, and, and damage the rest of the reflectors or whatever it was that it was shooting into, like the sheetrock at the end of the other wall. Um, and so I went ahead and used cap down tape, which is what NASA uses in Marsh Rover spacecraft. It's uh, very lightweight, but it's uh, resistant to high extreme temperatures, high and low and and, uh, and low temperatures. Um, and then these are the micro adjusters, so you can you can determine the, the, the pitch as well as the yaw of where the laser uh, will end up on. And then this is a quick engraving I did. So engraving essentially what it is is be able, being able to control a high power laser and what you get is you, you essentially burn into the wood and you create a 3D depth um, map of a picture. And so if it's very dark it, it creates a number from 0 to 255, 8 bits. Um, and, uh, you, that's the depth at which the laser is, is shooting at. Intensity, really. And that's the picture. And this is the, this, this, this summer is at UTB. I was a lead robotics instructor for the summer robotics camp. And uh, these are the students, or one cohort. This is the cooler. You get that for like 800 bucks uh, from China. Uh, although shipping is like 200 bucks, so. Although it arrives in two days, I swear to God, it arrives in two days. It's crazy. And then all the material down there um, is for robots that I want to sell value-wide. Um, I already have about 15 orders uh, in, in, in uh, Porter High School in Brownsville, Texas. Bex has five, and I plan to sell 400 of those robots across the valley. I partnered up with Texas Valley's Community Foundation. Um, we covered today. Um, and we are now creating Saturday camps across the valley. And I want to be able to provide robots uh, for these students so that they don't have to go out and buy a $1,000 robot. Here's a robot that has six motors, three of which are for locomotion. For like this hexapod, six-legged robot, it uses three motors to walk forward, reverse, left, right. Um, it, has, it will have sonar so it can determine if there's obstacles up front. Well, it actually has two, so it can, yeah. And then it, uh, it will have an Arduino, uh, Arduino microcontroller. I mean, they're quite popular. You get these now for ten dollars from China, and then you have the uh, servo controller. Where you can you can you can hook up the motors, which are essentially fancy motors, which have electronic uh, circuit board and a potentiometer, and you can proportionally control the angle at which the output shaft moves. Um, and th this is the next version. I want to add a third axis. So right now it's just X and Y, and I gotta manually control the the Z axis. I want to now include a two-foot z-axis so I could create 3D printed parts out of titanium and, and steel um, and pretty much create anything that comes to mind. So I don't got to now hand, you know, do it by hand. It's just a matter of doing it in three dimensions on, the, on, so on software and send it out to the machine and I have a six by four foot by two foot envelope size to play with. And so this is this two-foot z-axis. And I already have the welding equipment and I already, I already sourced the steel. It's just a matter of start welding, but I don't have much time. So I, I partnered with TVCOF, and they've cut, they have me quite busy. Um, and this is just the schematic of how it all works. We got the two XY, XY motors, we got the controller, uh, we got the power supply unit, we got the very small laser, which is a lot bigger though. Um, and then these are the limit switches, of which it only uses for when it, it hits the home position at initial startup. These are the robots I plan on building. These are super easy to develop. Uh, so these are using fancy servos. Uh, this is a robotic arm that sells for $3,500. I could develop that for less than $200. Uh, and, I don't know, sell it for $500 and still make a bank on it. Um, this one sells for about $1,500, mostly because of the motors. Each motor is about $40, but you can source for $20 from Korea. Um, and what's, what's so cool about these robots is that uh, you can add attachments onto them. You, 
essentially whatever you want, really. Um, and ev everything I want, I plan on selling is already, you could already, already control it over Android phones or Bluetooth modules that you can source for $4 directly from China. Um, and so I plan on having these robotic arms uh, through Texas Valley Communities Foundation um, and integrating these robots and prosthetic arms and whatnot into middle schools, elementary schools, high schools, so that they get that exposure to technology that they would normally not have uh, because it's too expensive and teachers don't know how to teach it. Um, no pun intended. Don't get mad at me, though. But it's true. It's, the teachers are scared to teach these kind of technologies because they don't even know how to, where to begin. Uh, so here we, we're trying to create a curriculum and, and a package so that teachers can very easily, quickly um, pick up the material and start disseminating. And it's just a matter of going down the line. And you know, these, this is what a sensor does. This is what a microcontroller does. This is what you know. This is how we store the memory. And, and really, anything you add, we're local, and we're, we're, I'm based off of. I live in Brownsville, Texas, but now I'm based off of Mercedes, Texas, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, the warehouse, uh, cost and time effectiveness. I built this desk um, entirely from scratch. Imagine being able to send this to the laser machine. If I, or, you know, I can mass produce these desks. And so this is kind of where I work on other on circuit boards. Yes, I like Humix over there. Um, and imagine being able to develop this desk in less than five minutes. You just got to lay down the sheets of wood and have the laser go at it. And this is something that the current laser can already cut. This is 3 quarter inch thick, um, about 8 ply. Um, the, pl the, the laser can cut up to a little bit over 1 inch, either fabrics, plastics, um, anything that's non ferrous or reflective, like alum aluminum or steel. I took the logo, sorry, and uh, it, was, it was in high res, so I went ahead and recreated it little by little. And it's kind of what you guys have right now. And then that's what gets sent out to the laser. That's what you guys have, that's right. Some other stuff I work on. And then we're, this is the, the partnership I work with. I'm working with TVCOS so that we can, we have these $40,000 uh, medical simulators and we're going to be going around the valley, specific, mostly in the Edinburgh, McAllen area here, um, displaying this technology and having students uh, essentially learn how to revive a person um, at an at elementary state, elementary school. So. And this is the warehouse in Mercedes, uh, little by little, of course. So right now that laser is illegal, but as long as I don't take it out and shoot it at people, it's fine. So the, why is it illegal is because I cannot have it at a work plate or a work site yet because um, someone bumps the reflector and that reflector can shoot that laser and 150 watt laser running through, that's pretty dangerous, yeah. But I, that's kind of why I, I bought all the welding equipment. I bought the steel already. It's just a matter of using the Haku gun and putting steel together and creating that entire structure so that if anything does get bumped or touched in there, it's all encased. And that becomes a class one laser, I think, safe. Yeah. Um, you're, from what I understand, your laser is stationary on the platform, correct? What size? Uh, let's just start with a normal body part. So like a... A, a full a scale? Like a Are you talking about a RC, RC style? No, I'm talking about a full airplane, about the size of... The yes, thing. you can. Yeah. Yep. So that would be... So that's kind of my next step. So. To, to cut aluminum or thin aluminum, is you, you need to add oxygen assist. So you can increase the temperature of that laser as it's protruding through the material. The only way to do that is safely. So the optics, currently the optics, what, it, what they do is uh, there's a five be, uh, millimeter uh, diameter beam path running through the optics. And the optics right now is uh, 50.8 millimeters in, in focal length. So that means that it's creating essentially a triangle, right? Um, what I'm going to add to that is 100.8 millimeters. So I'm going to increase. And, and right now, I, I have a, a tolerance of like 1 millimeter. I'm going to reduce that to 0.5 when I go to 100.8. And that's when I can begin. And when, when I, once I integrate the oxygen assist, I can increase the temperatures to like 2,000 degrees Celsius. And I can plow right through aluminum. So the idea yes. I got a friend.
Yes. That, that and um, you're focusing a large amount of energy at one single point. Yeah. And it, when you do, you're doing it like this, you're distributing all that heat in a pretty, you know, pretty wide um, angle of incidence. And so if you um, narrow that down, what essentially what you're doing is you're, you're focusing all that energy at a s and, and melting just a small part. And it becomes much more effective as opposed to distributing that heat. Much more effective also when you increase the temperatures. And that's through oxygen assist. But to keep it safe and to keep the optics safe, you need to exclude the oxygen, the, dr the, the, the oxygen uh, away from the actual compressor line that's running air so that it keeps those optics cool. And then later down the road, I'm not going to worry about that anymore because I'm going to go fiber. So I need to sell 400 robots for that. <laughs> yeah. PDMF? Is that like some kind of? Poly plastics, okay, yeah, yeah, plastics, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yes. So it's point zero zero one mil millimeters precise, and that's theoretically, but I've increased that because I have three phase uh, stepper motors, and so. Um, I gotta explain this. Six by four feet. The laser is six by four feet. The table is eight by six feet. Yeah. And the not is it when you upscale it that much, it doesn't work out quite well. Because you're using um, belts. And the longer those belts are, the more elastic they become. So you when you try to go three hundred and fifty millimeters and then stop, all that momentum is trying to keep going and those elastic uh, belts which is Yes. Yeah. Good, yeah, those are awesome. <laughs> so, so those are more like rack and pinion. Um, they, they use a, sort of like a bicycle chain. Um, so then you would have to redesign the entire. So that's where I, I want to get to. Yes, rack and pinion with, to, with, with a cam master. And that's going to give me a 5 by 10 work envelope and an eight, 8 inch. But I'm trying to add 2 feet to this. So I can do laser sintering, which is additive printing. Um, additive manufacturing, which is 3D printing, essentially. But steel and titanium, which is super awesome. Yeah. Right. Is this the hardest job that you've done? I, I, I actually, TVCOF, they want, a, they want a large sign. And so they quoted them $1,000. They're like, I can do it for $10 and just throw on the laser. So that's kind of the partnership between TVCOF and, and Raybotics so that we can um, essentially help each other out. They help me sell robots, I help them with odd jobs, like that. And it's a sign about eight feet 